into it and uh, uh, their names are really powerful as well. So immediately sitting next to me on my right, he's Calvin Kanagi, he'll correct me if I mispronounce it as well. He'll tell us what he does in the company. Then next to him is Vidalis Hakim. Good morning, Karibuni Sana. Good morning. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to start off with you, Calvin. Um, uh, what do you do at the company that you got and how have you brought in your tech skills? Okay, thank you very much for having me here. My name is Calvin Kanagi. I am a software developer and an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, so we, we started this company in the year 20. What is the name of the company first? Upper Urban ASP. Upper Urban ISP. ISP. Uh, does the initial have a full meaning? Uh, well, initially we started as a service pro internet service provider, internet but with time, provider. with the need mm -hmm. in the society, yeah. we transformed into a big tech company that we are offering, offering every solution like yeah. in softwares, internet, and also any startup that want to go online. All right, um, that's good. So you'll tell us what softwares and internet mean to a person who doesn't understand softwares and internet. Uh, what about you, uh, Hakim? Yeah, Vidalis, good morning. Should I go with Vidalis or Hakim? You can Either. use any. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, a brief intro about yeah, yourself. So basically, I'm a software developer too, mm -hmm. but I run mostly the entrepreneurial bit of the organization. Uh -huh. Yeah, mainly matters business okay. and growth. All right. Yeah. Uh, please remind me the name of the company. <laughs> Urban. Urban ISP. ISP. Urban ISP. Urban yeah. Internet Service Provider. That's what it means. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh, let me get back to you, Calvin, once again. Mm -hmm. uh, when you speak of, 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 of softwares and, and IT, there's a lot that comes in, in there. And for a person who is watching right now, maybe if you can break it down to some of the services that you are offering to now, uh, let's imagine the local money into some of the uh, some of the subscribers or some of the clients that you guys have money to work with what was the feedback uh, what was the first interaction and when was it so you can start with when and the services that you guys offer <coughs> first of all to start with when you talk about tech uh, mostly we talk about bridging the distance yeah. between two people it's like take, uh, shutting the distance like okay. now the way we are communicating here right. and the viewers who are watching us they're able to get us because of the <coughs> software and the internet that right. they're able. So we have shortened the distance between our communication and them. They're right. able to get us and they can give us a feedback. Mm -hmm. So basically that is tech. We ensure yeah. that the distance between uh, of relaying information is shortened. Yeah. So in the year 2018, mm -hmm. there we... That's when you started? Yeah. Just so like we two years it. before COVID? Yeah. Okay. So we saw a niche in the industry. We wanted to ensure that communication is seamless and efficient. Right. Uh, so in that, we wanted to improve the internet mm -hmm. around the road. Okay. So we started as a small startup. I was right. with my friend. Mm -hmm. We were the founders of the company. Then with progress, we started increasing the numbers. As the <coughs> startup start, okay. we were able to face some challenges of the startups like funding, mm -hmm. but we were able to mitigate through Okay. Until now, where we are, we can say that mm -hmm. we are a big company that is yeah. able to give solutions mm -hmm. in the industry. Okay, who, who are your first clients and uh, what service did they get from Urban ISP? Uh, our first clients were our friends. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes when you have good friends, they, they are able to give you support. Okay. So our friends were our first client. Okay. And then with referrals, we right. moved up steadily. Right, good. Uh, have, have Videli, so you said either. So yeah. you said you're handling the entrepreneurial part. Yeah. And, you know, being a businessman, uh, you require a lot of skills that you know includes inter and interpersonal skills. Meaning, uh, I'll explain. Intra, your relationship with yourself sometimes determine a relationship with how you relate with other people, and that speaks of PR. So, what made you so become inviting that now people are looking out for your company? What made it so unique that? those now clients coming in, streaming in. I don't know if they're coming in, I'm just assuming. So you'll tell us if you still have clients coming in, I'm, uh, it died. But of course, it, it's still a live business. That's why you're here on TV to talk about it. So tell us about that. Yeah, so in the beginning, we went in to offer the solution. Okay. And that's what attracted most people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, when most people get into, get into business, right. they go with the target of making money mm -hmm. and profits. I thought that should be the target. No, when you go with that target, you're likely to fail because you're likely to do what everyone does. Okay. But when you're going to solve the problem, 
right. everyone is likely to come I love for that. the solution. I love that. So going with the mindset of bringing solutions on the table, yeah. help people not go there with the mindset of making profit and money. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good one. Mm -hmm. so, you, so when basically you solve their problems, they have an offer for you. Yeah. And that's the profit you make. Right. So basically that's how we go to grow. Right. And initially our first aim was to grow a peer community right. where we get to help people learn dev from the, the less fortunate people or let's, let's say the, from the poor backgrounds. Right. Yeah, you get to offer them sponsorships right. and peer help. Right. So then later on we could uh, incorporate them into projects where mm -hmm. they get to grow and build their skills. Mm -hmm. Later on, that we got to build a market right. and our, our a client base. workforce. Yeah. All right, good. Uh, still on that, you mentioned dev, <laughs> which yeah. means development <coughs> and software. And uh, both of you in common have mentioned you're a software developer. So mm -hmm. perhaps you can mention to us for a person who has no clue what is software developing, and then we can transition that into coding. And you'll mention things like Laravel, and there's so many, JavaScript, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I've not studied it, but I've read about it, so I know one, two, three. So yeah. you'll mention to us about that as well. So if you can explain to us what is software developing and then transition into coding and how you've incorporated that in your company as well. Still, uh, Vidalis. Okay, so software development is basically <coughs> building interfaces mm -hmm. that aid communication. Mm -hmm. Building interfaces that aid communication. Yeah, mm -hmm. so basically, like a software, basic software, let's talk of something that everyone has encountered. Right. Our website, right. we have the front end. Mm -hmm. That's our website. We have the graphical user interface. Right. That's what when you Google, for example, Y254, right. what pops onto your screen mm -hmm. is our website, and, and, and a graphic landing page. Representation. Yeah, it's a graphical mm -hmm. uh, representation. Right. Then there's a back end right. which controls what you see and how it pops up. Yeah. For example, you'll have graphics moving right. that's controlled on the back end. Mm -hmm. You'll have a button, maybe mm -hmm. a contact button. Right. On the, on the, you'll have the appearance, maybe the color. Right. written contact, maybe in blue in color. Right. When you click it, it will pull a process. Right. The process is controlled on right. the back end. Mm -hmm. So software development is integrating at the back end and mm -hmm. the front end mm -hmm. to bring up uh, an interface right. that performs a specific function right. that you intend to work on. Right. That's yeah. a good introduction for an <coughs> IT class about that. So in short, it means you're a front end, you're the user consuming an already constructed yeah. uh, interface that's being <coughs> controlled by a manufacturer yeah. or a controller. Yeah. Right. Good one. Now, uh, coding, <coughs> talk about it and what it means for a person watching. Uh, coding. <coughs> First of all, we can start with <coughs> the way the, uh, the hardware and the software communicate. Mm -hmm. Software and the coding. Yeah. Mostly, the hardware to, for the software to communicate with the hardware, right. there's a level that they communicate, <coughs> they communicate in a bunch of zeros and ones. Mm -hmm. Zeros and, and ones. ones. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what does that mean? <coughs> so that's the basic level that, that's what we call the machine language. Right. So okay. for the, <coughs> sorry, mm -hmm. so for the uh, software to communicate with the machine, they mm -hmm. communicate in zeros and ones. Okay. But for us humans, it is very difficult to, to write that code. Mm -hmm. like write zeros and ones and it makes mm -hmm. sense. Right. So that's where coding comes in. Right. And coding, they have something we call the compilers. Right. So the compilers, they help when you write a code, the compilers, they help to, <coughs> like they are acting on a level of abstraction, mm -hmm. whereby the, you can write a real code, the language that you are using, mm -hmm. then the compiler, they translate it to zeros and ones mm -hmm. so that it can make sense to the machine. Mm -hmm. So that's basically coding. Right. And then coding, we have very na a number of languages, right. like we can start with uh, JavaScript, mm -hmm. React, and everything. Mm -hmm. So there are so many languages. Right. Depending on your choice, you can right. choose the language that best suits you, and right. the one that you can work, uh, you, can, you can easily work with. Right. Then with these languages, they are also, they perform specific tasks. Mm -hmm. Like you can't use this language to develop this. Right. So that's coding. Right. Then coding is a skill that right. everyone can learn. Right. Wherever you are, mm -hmm. like any language, now yeah. we are speaking in English, right. but it's not our language. Mm -hmm. It's something that we learned. Mm -hmm. And also in the machine language, it's mm -hmm. something that you can learn. learn. 
-hmm. Then there's no age that you can say, like, if you are 60. You can't learn coding. As long as you can read and write, you can mm -hmm. learn. You can learn. Yeah. You can learn, relearn, and learn. And it's exactly. A <laughs> so uh, in, in that coding process, uh, you guys, uh, if, 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 if now maybe you can, you can explain to us, why is it common nowadays? Like there's now companies advertising, there's even schools that are uh, recruiting, even young learners as, high, as low as high school. Not even as low as primary <coughs> school, even nursery. I've seen, I saw an yeah. advert where there's a nursery school tr trying to teach the children how to code. Why is it important to have skills of coding? You see, the society is ever changing. Mm -hmm. Like uh, from the 80s, actually the internet was born in the around 80s, 70s, around there. Mm -hmm. So initially, the, what people used to was using those traditional means. Okay. But as the internet grew, this need so that this need to include everyone. Mm -hmm. That's why there is so many, uh, there's a, a rise of number of people go joining tech. Mm -hmm. Just like in farming, right. there was a time that everyone was in, into farming. Right. But we realized that land is mm -hmm. a fixed, uh, it is fixed. You can't, in, in, you can't expand or increase land. Mm -hmm. But with the internet, it's endless. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, endless and a lot of opportunities there. Right. So, and uh, nowadays the internet is accessible almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. And now, just to mention, like the government had decided that we are going to have hotspot areas around the country. Mm -hmm. So you realize that when the internet is accessible, then you have to increase the services that we are going to offer. Yeah. Because now people are moving from the analog world to the digital, mm -hmm. everyone. Right. So this need to make sure that everyone is included. Right. Let me come back to you, Hakimi. But when I come back to you, Calvin, you'll tell us uh, what are some of the COVID coding languages that you mentioned and how, uh, what is the, maybe what examples of uh, a best and a well-secured or developed website and some of its features. So you'll paint for us that picture. Now, uh, for you, Hakim, uh, you, you've mentioned how you guys are doing outreach and you're giving this uh, excellent service to your clients. Uh, how did you manage to have uh, this group of people that you're working with that are now stuck with you and the support that you're getting? Uh, there may be partnerships that you had to go for. Uh, did you have to raise a campaign or an awareness? And now that you know, here you are talking about it on TV. Yeah. So to start with, we had to get a workforce first. Mm -hmm. That's the labor to work with. Mm -hmm. So being in tech, the first person I got is my friend Calvin. Okay. He had friends, I had friends. Right. We came together and created a pool mm -hmm. of developers. Right. So we started working on projects together without okay. funding initially. Mm -hmm. Then we started selling them and pitching to other companies. Okay. Uh, then later on, after selling some products mm -hmm. to other companies and services, yeah. we wh got wh what did you s What did you put up together and pitch to a company? Because uh, uh, I have a friend who's, uh, who's also a coder, yeah. and uh, he was giving me his right card, and the money, he, has, he has a very huge amount of money. Yeah. So uh, was it, there was there no at first, or there silence at first, or you pitched, and they accepted, and you guys kicked off. What we sold was a solution okay. to the companies. Mm -hmm. We started by identifying local businesses okay. and offering solutions mm -hmm. that they needed for their businesses. Right. You know, you find like in our current day, Right. People believe that having a website is having a, a running online business. Mm. But basically that's not all. Right. You need to have awareness out there. Mm -hmm. So we have the uh, how do you, search engine optimization. Mm -hmm. So for some companies that had their website running, mm -hmm. but they didn't have the awareness, right. we offered them optimization. Right. And they were Maybe very if you can explain what SEO means, and uh, optimization. For yeah. anyone who doesn't understand. So search engine optimization is just increasing the awareness or mm -hmm. availability mm -hmm. of your of your let's say business mm -hmm. on the network. And making it searchable, like the yeah. first time you search yeah. it to YouTube, it whatever. It pops up. Pops up. Yeah. And maybe what can make <coughs> it visible? Uh, what are some of the features that the can make keywords, business visible? Mm -hmm. keywords. Increasing the keywords, mm -hmm. having a more interactive website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the interactive details. meaning it has features that are user friendly, very user colorful friendly. and bold. Yeah, and attractive. Mm -hmm. That makes it more available because right. many people are likely to be attracted to it. Mm -hmm. The more people get to click or open your site, okay, 
the more it's likely to pop up. Right. And the more it pops up, the more likely you are to sell. Right. Yeah, so some of our first uh, products we sold mm -hmm. were solutions to problems that business had. Yeah, maybe you so, can also narrow it down to the solutions, because when you say solutions, it's, it's general. Maybe yeah. so, what company and what service? Yeah, for example, Zayda. Mm -hmm. Zayda was starting a, a networking company also. Mm -hmm. They had the manpower. Okay. They had their, their finances and everything well, mm -hmm. uh, put well in order. So they are starting their business, uh, selling people Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. but they didn't have a website. Right. We built their website. Mm -hmm. We did the search engine, search engine optimization for them. Mm -hmm. We also helped them do the marketing and the awareness campaigns. Right. Yeah, to help them grow. We've done a number of websites okay. currently for a number of businesses. Right. You yeah. can still mention them since it's you. Yeah. You made it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Though you know some of them, we are. Uh, it's we an are, NDA. Non-disclosure yeah, non agreement. Okay, good. Yeah. I got you. I'll mm -hmm. come back to you still shortly. So you can tell us the coding languages and uh, uh, the, what is um, a description of a well-developed website mm -hmm. and maybe the process of even developing <coughs> it so you can divert into it. So currently there are so many languages mm -hmm. in the field. Like initially we started with C, C++, C Sharp. Mm -hmm. Now that we have JavaScript, Python. Mm -hmm. There are so many languages. Yeah. And in fact, I can tell you that even tomorrow we are going to have a new Another language. Another one. Mm -hmm. So the, in, the, in terms of languages, they're ever evol evolving. Mm -hmm. But one thing you realize that. So you can, learn, you can learn Laravel and still use Python and still use JavaScript. Uh, first yeah. of all, what is the difference? Laravel, Python, JavaScript. Yeah, the difference between these languages is they are what, they are, what they can do. Mm -hmm. Like what software do you want to build right. and which type of maybe solution are you going to, do you want to solve? Mm -hmm. So that's the difference between these languages. Mm -hmm. So de depending on the need you have, maybe mm -hmm. in your organization, in what you want to build and on the, the problem you're facing, mm -hmm. you're going to choose a certain language. Mm -hmm. then to, but if you want to join tech, mm -hmm. you have to start with the basic levels like C, C++, because mm -hmm. those are the fundamental, like they are the building blocks mm -hmm. for these for these, uh, for for <coughs> for these languages, mm -hmm. even today you can find that even in Python there are some aspects of C, yeah. but you find that uh, with the improvement of these languages, yeah. they are somehow uh, becoming. I can I say it easier? Like mm -hmm. they are trying to ensure that uh, even the most be uh, the basic person can mm -hmm. join, can write a code, yeah. <coughs> which can be translated into machine language easily. Right. Yeah. So there are so many languages. Right. Yeah, but so the one that you've managed to use for yourself uh, in your study is the common <coughs> that you used. As uh, as my friend said, mm -hmm. we started an uh, an organization like we train people. Mm -hmm. So I have mastered a number of languages. Mm -hmm. So I'm you can sell yourself. Eh? You know, sell yourself. Yeah, we are we are teachers. So in uh -huh. most of the languages that are ex uh, in the field right mm -hmm. now, we mm -hmm. can teach you. The, and uh, we have so many. Uh, we have so many, how can I say, it's like we have built, uh, we have built a school mm -hmm. for this language, uh, for, for training people into code. Mm -hmm. So, so if you want I to wanted you to mention like you are a master in JavaScript, a master in yeah. Python, a um, master in Laravel. Uh, my, I have mastered JavaScript, mm -hmm. that's my best, okay. and then Python, mm -hmm. and also the building languages like C, C++, right. they're also in my database. Right. And there are so many other developments in there. I, I consult a lot from Marvin Sharad. Okay. He's a coding guru. Uh, mm -hmm. The ones you've mastered as well, before you tell us uh, the people that you've done charity with. Yeah, I'm a Python enthusiast. Mm -hmm. All the Python. Well, but the Python is a snack, but here it's a coding <laughs> language. It's yeah. a coding language. <laughs> Maybe yeah. you can explain. Jam Twitter says, hey, no, it's, it's an IT it's language. Yeah. lingo. Yeah. Apparently, so, if you want to go into AI, Machine yeah. learning. Mm -hmm. Good. Love that you mentioned AI. Python is the way to go. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. Apparently, Python and JavaScript are the same thing. The same. Mm -hmm. They vary slightly. Okay. It's like Spanish and English. Mm -hmm. They're the same thing, but they vary slightly. Yeah. So once you master JavaScript, you right. can do Python. Mm -hmm. You just need some basic practice. Right. 
and training. There's, uh, there's a, one of my friends who did a Python exam. No, it was he, it was Laravel. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. when he said exam, your tutorial was about Laravel. So <laughs> there's a way that they can test you at mm -hmm. school on JavaScript from question one to the last. Yeah. So we can go to Marangapi and we disqualify you. In a full-on institution. Oh, it depends on the institution. But you know, for coding, uh -huh. it's project-based. Uh, project-based. Yeah. This, was, this one was in a university center, but then as an exam. Yeah. So there's no way you could escape it and say it's a project or uh -huh. it's an optional exam. Yeah. Mm. So apparently, like for us, like we, we grade our students or our peer okay. students mm -hmm. in terms of the success of the projects. Mm -hmm. We get to work on projects with them. Yeah. They come up with projects. Uh, they come up with projects or you assign them? No, they come up they with come their up. own projects. Uh -huh. We are trying to bring up the entrepreneurship bit right. in them. Uh -huh. So they come up with it, we help them verify it, mm -hmm. build it to the end. Whenever they're stuck, right. we come through. Then later on, they work on projects on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone does like two to three projects, Mm. That guy is good to go into the market and do his own thing yeah. or her own thing. So who do you say is a polished coder? Actually, hey, so Karibuni, Karibuni spills <laughs> secrets, but thank you, God. Thank you, God. So who, who, who is a, who is a, a seasoned coder that you say, hey, whom say, but I'm um, He's yeah. a hot cake on the market of coding and IT. Whoever can do back end and front end swiftly. Exactly, nice. You've answered me in the head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is good. Yeah. So, but for example, here at White, for, for before we continue, um, mm. if that person that you've said can do back end and front end, which is common even in data, at least this is a wild coin. How do you need? Who are the syndicates behind this, you know, mysterious, you know, biometric app? So, for <laughs> RC at White, for for if you were to come and do back end and front end, what, what is the conversation we'll first have with our IT manager? Pardon again. If you were to come to Y254 and offer a back-end and front-end front service, uh, yeah. what is the first conversation you're going to have with an IT manager here? Yeah, first of all, we'll have to point out what we feel you're lacking. Mm -hmm. and then point out how we feel we'll offer it. So this means you'll have a conversation with the IT manager who explain you that here's how we run our yeah. IT arena, yeah. or you will do your own research online and do your notes and then give them feedback. We'll do our own research. So you'll diagonalize the yeah. patient. Nice. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Okay. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that makes us more relevant in your company mm -hmm. and more comfortable. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, for example, this is a TV station. Maybe yeah. what are some of the um, IT back-end services that you'd like maybe to know in terms of operations mm -hmm. and interactions, of course, with softwares? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think we mentioned earlier, we are now moving into AI mm -hmm. as a company. Right. We are trying to focus a lot on AI. Right. Uh, we are teaching our people, mm -hmm. or we are learning as a peer community, yeah. more of AI. Mm -hmm. And I think your company or your station mm -hmm will do with a lot of AI now. No. When you mention AI, the first thing, actually, the common thing people say it's robots, but no, there's a difference between chat GPT yeah, and robots. robotics and, and these other, you know, type and it gives you what you need. Yeah. Almost similar to Google. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so maybe if you can contrast for someone who doesn't understand robotics yeah. and AI. So AI basically is artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Intelligence is the knowledge the coded knowledge mm -hmm. in someone. Mm -hmm. How someone processes some information and reacts to it. Yeah. That's intelligence. Right. So AI is basically training machines mm -hmm. to receive and process information in a given informa in, in in a given manner. Yeah. That is AI. That's basically it's a command you you're keying in, you what yeah. you want and then it gives you. Yeah, but so then it just so happens that this instructions that are being given by you as the consumer or the, the person feeding on this device, yeah. it's another person who keyed in those instructions as exactly. well. Exactly, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, and robotics, robots are basically tools right. meant to make work easy, okay. such as same to AI, yeah. but robots use artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So robots consume artificial intelligence. intelligence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's still it's cute. human best. It's human feeding this Exactly. So why do we? Why do they say that robots are going to take over our jobs while it's still human beings who are who are running AI and running yeah. robotics as I, well? I think people have different perspectives mm -hmm. of AI. Mm. As for me, I view AI as a tool. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. not a competition. Right. So AI is meant to make life easier. Okay. Not to send you out of the market. Right. All day, all night, AI mm-hmm. will need you to work. Yeah, true. It can't work on its own. Right. So it's basically a tool to make your work easy. easier. So the more we, we are getting into the AI world, mm-hmm. I think people should focus more on building their skills right. or building their relevance skills. in the world of AI. Uh, do you feel like maybe it will reach you a place where coding will, is going to be like a compulsory unit in uni and in primary school now? Thank God they've introduced CBC. Um, maybe in 100 years. Maybe in 100 years. Our system is still... You don't see AI as the future of tech? AI is the future. Good. You but as a compulsory again. subject, mm. I think our education system is still lagging behind. All right. I'll come back to that. Uh, Calvin, you are to tell us uh, what is a secure website and what are some of the features that you know, show you that when you go on this one, but that this one is secure. And then let me bring in Studio Altcoin. <clears throat> they came in on the market mm-hmm. like a flash, flash flood. They took over, not even on the market, they came in Kenya. <laughs> they were offering free money. And here they started collecting people's biometrics <laughs> data. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the only thing that shocked me as well when I spoke to an IT expert friend, mm-hmm. she was like, you only have to prove that you're a human being and they give you 7,000 Kenya shillings and they're not assuring you who is this person at the back end handling this data? And then there's a place where they explain that you know this data can be accessed by anyone who has been given permission to run yeah. this wild coin. Yeah. So if you are somebody who is IT conscious, you're like, nope, red flag, not gonna sign in. Yeah. Did you catch that as well? <coughs> yeah, exactly. So sometimes when it's come to like let's say a basic website, mm-hmm. <coughs> first of all, to need to make sure is data. Mm-hmm. whether the user is entering the ta- data that is being taken in by the website, okay. how secure it is. Mm-hmm. So depending on the nature of the data, let's mm-hmm. say like somebody is putting his password right. and a username. Mm-hmm. So depending on which, uh, let's say, which uh, website is this, yeah. you have to put in mechanisms, like right. from the user, t- uh, user, user side yeah. and the back end. Mm-hmm. And you also make sure that <coughs> from the user and the back end, right. there are firewalls that are preventing mm-hmm. Right. Maybe the user can inject something, some data into your system, or, or even wipe, wipe delete everything. some data or yeah. consume without the permission. Yes. Uh-huh. And when it comes to giving out your data, right. you have also to be very conscious uh-huh. of what are you giving and uh-huh. who are you giving, yeah. and at what time are you giving. Okay. Like uh, in the example of Guadalcoin, uh-huh. people are giving their IRAs, uh-huh. <coughs> but you find that. Uh, what really pushed Kenyans to, into giving their IRAs, mm. uh, which so many Kenyans are not concerned about their data, but yeah. they're concerned about their stomachs. Mm. So that's why when they were lowered in by, it was around 7,000 or 6,000. Yeah, around that. 80 US dollars. So that's why they were able, they were give, just giving their data anyhow. Mm. And this guy, who is the owner of OpenAI, ah. what is his name? Mm. I don't really, but he's the owner of OpenAI. Mm. And OpenAI, is the one creating chat GPT. Mm. So maybe they want to create a system that there's a, there's a motive behind taking data. Yeah. But people, too, they should be very conscious right. about their data they are giving. Right. Do you and think they're using Kenya as a guinea pig for their you know, prototype project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel so? <laughs> yeah, they are using Kenya. And as well. mm-hmm. They're using Kenya and also because they think that we are easy targets. Mm. So, but there is need for the government to increase to increase social awareness about data, data protection and privacy. Yeah. Then they are also this case from Sudan Anonymous. Mm. They are taken our internet they into to hack into the Kenyan. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what could have possibly happened maybe in, in an IT analysis? Because in this in this case you are a doctor <laughs> and you're trying <coughs> to give a diagnosis of what could have happened between, before this patient got into this mess. So from your understanding, what was your feedback on it? I think uh, maybe, you see from this case, I actually managed to, I saw they were saying that they are doing, okay, they denied doing the DDoS attacks, mm-hmm. but basically that was what they were doing. Okay. Like they were feeding our system, yet the system cannot handle that much. Mm-hmm. And uh, though as the minister of ICT said, yeah. they didn't take any data. Right. They were just doing DDoS attacks. Mm. So I think that was it, but you can't know the extent at which they right. did the attacks. Right. And uh, maybe the government can't reveal to us what they did, mm. but we trust that whatever they did, 
yeah. didn't cause so much harm. Mm, and not successful. Uh, yeah. Step back to your company, Hakim. Uh, maybe w uh, how can people plug in and uh, get to know your services? Do you also guys have like a website? Yeah. Uh, is there, which is also the most consistent service that you guys are offering for your clients that you'd say this one keeps them coming back since you see you you come in as an an, an entrepreneur part yeah mm -hmm. so majorly we we do softwares mm. and systems softwares and systems for mm -hmm. companies okay. but recently we introduced another service uh -huh. whereby we are helping companies do digital migration mm -hmm. for example the hybridization mm. the remote working Mm -hmm. We've helped one company. Remote working. Have you heard something called Iwaka? You've ever heard of Iwaka? Uh, yeah. Nice. So mm -hmm. apparently we're helping companies move or migrate to remote working mm -hmm. or hybrid working. Right. And help them mitigate the challenges they're facing. Right. And adapt. Right. Yeah. So our major, our major focus is building the systems okay. and websites. Do you have a physical location? Uh, yeah. where you're best and, and maybe the building? Yeah, in Thika. Uh -huh. In Thika, Mama Jimmy. Mama Jimmy. Yeah. All right. Uh, still on that customer, customer relations experience, you know, interacting with different people uh, makes you learn their mindsets. Uh, people, when people tell you their stories and when somebody presents a problem to you, you're able to, you know, assess it and learn this person is coming from a place of need. Yeah. Uh, how do you differentiate between, um, let's say, a genuine customer yeah. And maybe just someone who's up to, you know, an attack of Pujaribu too and then I disappear. Yeah. And if, if at all it's true, have you ever met clients who just, they poke and then they disappear and there's that one who is intentionally and genuinely seeking your service and you finally even seal a deal, you deliver, get yeah. the money and say, God bless your heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the funny thing, yeah. most of the serious people pay before mm -hmm. the work is done. Those are serious clients. Yeah, but... How do you quote the figure? Because uh, quoting the figure is also cool. Yeah. It's very you know, important. People, uh -huh. people believe that there is, a, let's say, a standard figure for everything. Mm -hmm. But every figure comes in terms of the problem or solution we're offering. Yeah. Some require very little work done. Yeah. Like what task could completely just require, like one, two, three, done? Building a landing page. Building a landing? A landing page. A land? Landing landing picture page uh -huh. page uh, page all right uh -huh. yeah that's so basic uh -huh. uh, but the, most of our people let's say the youth uh -huh. uh, are wishing or eager to join the business world uh -huh. but they're not in a capacity uh -huh. so most of them someone will wake up in maybe one morning and uh -huh. will feel like i want to start a business uh -huh. i want to start the uh, first uh -huh. build a website uh -huh. then he'll come to your site and ask or call you and ask for a quotation mm. then disappear mm. maybe because they don't have the capacity mm. they're just hoping one day they'll mm. they'll be in a position yeah which is okay so how do you get them back am i it's done and dusted like share and evil let's promise pick it up them, next time okay bigger most of them come back because uh -huh. when you prom promise them the solution right they'll come back for the solution that's what they came for mm. yeah the fact that they don't have the muscle oh, yeah. or potential to cheap or buy your product at the moment oh, yeah. doesn't mean they're not the right customers for you yeah a time will come and they'll come back yeah with the amount of money they need oh, yeah. of which we are so cheap apparently you're so affordable you sure you're affordable and accessible and accessible yeah. All right yeah All right so you'll tell us more about how people can access you but towards the end yeah and then also uh, in terms of uh, every business has competition yeah. uh, there's also clients that go and come back. So uh, what, may, what is the feedback that you guys get from return clients? There's somebody here who interviewed, he said he, she said half of her clients are return clients who have also referred yeah. other clients. And now it's like a whole client base yeah. that's just centered on that business. So how do you guys maintain that return and referral base for clients? What we've come to learn over time, whenever you solve the, someone's problem perfectly, Mm -hmm. he'll always come back oh, yeah. because he'll have trust in you. Mm -hmm. He'll be sure whenever he wants. It's like a barber. Yeah. When you go to your barber and he, yeah. he does your haircut the way you want it, yeah. you'll always go there. Again. You'll pass very many, many barber, barber shops. shops. Yeah. Mbali, you can go to Thika and yeah. you stay in Kilimani. Yeah. 
yeah. for that one, Baba. In short, trust and, trust and delivery. And delivering excellence. perfectly. Right. We focus mainly on doing our work based on what the customers want, want. not mm -hmm. what we want. Right. We try to focus most on your... So you listen to the needs of the client. Exactly. The you know, like, developing is more of art. Right. The, and when it comes to art, different kinds or types of art yeah. appeal differently to different people. Mm. So when you get to understand someone's type of art, right. you can easily deliver what they want yeah, true. perfectly. Mm -hmm. And you're sure they'll come back. Right. Yeah. So how do you, how do you keep customer care relations? Because now since you're, a, you're the entrepreneur part end as well, though you double up as still uh, with the other duties, yeah. how do you keep that relationship fluid? Because, you know, sometimes, uh, yes, you've done and sealed the deal, but you don't want to keep in touch with the person because yeah. that was work and it's done. Yeah. But then there's always a need for a business to keep a relationship with its clients. Yeah. Comes off sometimes as PR, yeah. but then it can even extend to even personal relationship, especially now in remote working areas. Yeah. Uh, to some, we offer them after-sale services mm -hmm. for free. Uh -huh. We help them do some maintenance for free <coughs> according to what they, they want done. Mm. But again, you know, starting... We were the technicians mm. and the entrepreneurs. Mm. We did a lot of the communication and all that. Okay. It was one hell of a job. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're frustrated when a customer is calling. Yeah. Also frustrated. Right. It's hard to maintain a good rapport in such an environment. Right. We decided to have someone basically in charge of communication and relations, okay. re relations with our Clients, clients. Mm -hmm. yeah, to in, to avoid that issue of like technicians mm -hmm. interacting directly with the customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nice, excellent. Uh, back to you. Uh, what are some maybe some of the trends in in this tech space that you'd point out? And now that we have Chat GPT and many others, in fact, kuna zingine kama tano apokatikati. Chat GPT is is the loudest here. Yeah. Uh, are there some that you've noticed in in the coding space and also mm -hmm. in the AI space? There are so many. Like, mm. Actually, ChatGPT, it was even there from, I think, 2018, 2015, 2017. Mm. But it was there as OpenAI. Yeah. The same thing that ChatGPT is doing now, it, yeah. was the, it was what OpenAI was doing. What do you think made it prominent? I think well, uh, because it's now more responsive, and then it, is, it, uh, it works like a chat. Mm. It's like you are communicating, hey, OpenAI, can you help me with that list of this then it populates yeah so that uh, that's what made it so popular right then there are so many <coughs> AIs nowadays people are even you see maybe you want to communicate with somebody this is yeah. a way that you can integrate that GPT mm. into your system so that if somebody wants to order maybe something it's able to give real-time information on what is available mm. at what price yeah and at what time maybe it's their deliver and everything yeah so now we are moving into uh, like chatbots, right. like we want to uh, reduce the number of customer customer care relations. So you have to train. Uh, like we are starting a program mm -hmm. where if you, if you are market, maybe you train our bot, you train the bot, mm -hmm. so that you can be able to chat with the customers yeah. around what is on the website. Yeah. Let's say this is e-commerce website. Let's say use for an example Jumia. Mm -hmm. So somebody can chat with the this chatbot and yeah. it's able to get him whatever he wants without yeah. having to search. Yeah. So that's what we are working on, on right now. Okay. So that, uh, in fact, we want to reduce the, the time somebody is going to spend on the website. Mm. You see, pe people are very busy. Or even on a social media. Have you seen uh, this example where I once, uh, I once did a voiceover for Blue Band mm -hmm. and uh, so I went on the Instagram inbox and I, I said, hey, have you received the ad? And then there's, there's consistent information, high brand, blah, blah, blah. But these are already keyed in commands. It's not like there's somebody operating it at the back end. Yeah. yeah. Is, is that an example of it? Yeah, that's the, what, we are, what we are working on right now. Okay. And then we want even to, in fact, to move it from the website to WhatsApp. Okay. So that this dedicated chatbot. Right. That it's able to access, you can query whatever you want from the this chat on WhatsApp, right. then it's able to look up into the into your website, 
and mm -hmm. give real time information yeah. Yeah. of what is on the website. But is it not a little bit boring for a person who has an intense need to get feedback from a real person? Especially if you're aware, now that I know it's a chatbot, mm -hmm. I'll be like, let me not just text, let me find a number so that I get. Don't you feel like it's bridging that gap between a human and just now a chatbot uh, uh, tech? You see, uh, sometimes as you said, there are commands. It's, uh, it's like it's asking you, hey, Brian, you want this? press mm. two and three nini. Yeah. But we want to make it so easier that if you want to say, let's say I want a laptop core i5 and this, mm. then it's able to populate you everything that is available. Right. And then this, uh, as long as we're improving technology, right. there's need for humans. We oh. can't do away with the humans. Right. But we want to make sure that uh, whatever the human is, is able to handle like these repetitive tasks, mm -hmm. like uh, you call, hey, uh, do you have this Right. We want to reduce these repetitive tasks right. to surrender them to the AI so that humans can handle mm. the most creative and innovative ideas mm. that they can give out. All right. Uh, when it comes to organizations, for example, let me still use Y254 again. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the data part really matters. So if you are, are, are you data savvy? Like you're savvy with data handling as well, since yeah, it's part of IT. That. Yeah. So if you were to maybe uh, be employed here to do data preservation, mm -hmm. or to ensure that there's that docket of uh, data protection, maybe what, what would you be offering for us? Uh, first of all, many companies prefer having their uh, data kept maybe in Amazon, somewhere there. Mm -hmm. But I prefer a company to store their own data. Right. Uh, so that you reduce that that party Mm -hmm. uh, interaction. Mm -hmm. mm. Then you also have to ensure that who is accessing this data, let's say you have a dedicated people, mm -hmm. like d uh, tech guys, to handle yeah. the data and the most sensitive data to be handled with people who are responsible for that. Yeah. And do not allow everyone to, to be interacting with their data. Uh -huh. What about a server? Yeah, that's what I said, like you have to have your data locally in your server mm. because server is the home for data. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, you, you mentioned charity. Uh, how, you, how, how are you guys now branching into that? And maybe what are the achievements that you managed to uh, fulfill for yourself before we exit in the next two minutes? Okay. So by charity, our way of charity is teaching other people teaching how other to people. code okay. and preparing them for the entrepreneurial world. Hmm. Mainly we are teaching the kids or guys from high school. Right from the less fortunate communities. Mm -hmm. uh, Why did you identify that as a target market? Basically, it's not a market. Mm. It's a give back to the community. Okay, we feel back. like okay. code is expensive to learn mm. in Kenya. Uh, most of the coding schools are expensive. Right. But we have people out there right. who are willing and eager to learn code mm. and are entrepreneurial. Mm. Once you can teach someone how to code or build something on his own right. and implement his ideas mm. uh, in, in a coded language. Yeah. It's easy to build an entrepreneur yeah. who can help other people. Okay. So that's why in our system we get together mm -hmm. uh, kids from there, one or two, mm. because we don't have a large capacity at the moment. Yeah. How many them. people are you? Like in, in terms of size, how many people do you work with at, your, at Urban ISP? We're close to 30. Close to 30, that's a... That's a full circle company <laughs> if it's a startup, I'd say. The developers are, the developers are many. The developers are many. They're so really how are you sourcing them? From campus, am I anyone who's applied, am I referral? Mostly it's referrals. Okay. Yeah, because we major mostly on people who are so passionate about what they're doing. Mm. Yeah. We, we are just more of a community. Oh, it's a community. Yeah, so mm. when we get people from these other communities, mm. they, maybe the less fortunate, right. we get to bring them into our system, right. teach them how to code, right. teach them the basics of entrepreneurship, right. then allow them to build something right. from their own creativity. Right. Then we support it. Right. Sometimes we get funding right. on the projects. Uh, but you get funding? Yeah. You give them funding or you... We get oh, you get funding. Outside. So you have partners and volunteers and Volunteers well come through uh -huh. in some instances. Okay. But at the moment, we are not that far. Mm. But we are hoping soon enough we'll have a capacity right. yeah, to grow that far. Right. Yeah. Thanks. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an interesting example of a data, uh, what? 
there's a word you guys use in, in that space. I mean, yes, but I'll find it, I'll find it. So the example is ATM here, IEBC, uh, elections were being done last year. Yeah. We saw Jose Camargo was the, me, the demigod in that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jose Camargo entered, oh, it seems like, and there, there were whole receipts being printed in lorries, bringing yeah. receipts. Yeah. What was your diagnosis of that? Because they're saying this other side, the person who had the right to access that server, yeah. Is Jose or Jose Camargo oh, from whatever he was? Yeah. What happened here? And and the story of intellectual properties and rights and your limits as of course us. Uh, I believe us for us as Kenyans, we were the user. We were on the user interface or yeah. the backend. Well, we were the user interface or the backend. The user, the user we were the user interface, right? Yeah. I love the fact that it's now IT. Now you will see. Uh, please go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, as Kenyans, right. you could log in into your portal or onto the IBC portal what you'll see are figures yeah. that are presented. Whoever presents is at the back end. Okay. You can't control what he presents. Uh -huh. So anybody who had access to the back end mm. had access to what you'd see as a Kenyan. Yeah. So uh, could there be a possibility that they also have uh, um, power to manipulate and change things? You yes or no? <laughs> they have the rights. <laughs> they have the rights to manipulate because they are are you saying the users of the guys on the back end? Yeah. The users of the guys at the back end? No, the guys at the back end. Of course, who could see it through our consumers? <laughs> so the guys at the back end, as yeah. long as you have, you see the, the way database, let's say the way the database mm. is organized, yeah. you can give some rights to the certain folder. Right. So depending on who you are, yeah. you can gain access. Right. Uh, okay, like in 2017, there is a very sensitive case, like the guy of Musando. He okay. said that nobody is going to access yeah. what I have. Right. I have the information, the password is my yeah. fingerprint. Yeah. Then after a few days, mm. it's found somewhere yeah. with no finger. Right. So whatever you have, mm. like to the back end and the rights that you are given, yeah. let's say user X, mm. that's what you can do to the rights that you have been given. All right, and uh, let's pause it from there. I think we'll have a part two. <laughs> we'll have a part two because uh, I uh, actually understand the time is up. So uh, you can share how can people get you and if anybody wants to enroll at your organization and maybe seek your services, where is the number, where is the website, social media, very fast. Either of you can say and then we go. Uh, Hakim or Calvin, are you ready? Okay, just to sum it up. Yeah. Uh, the internet is a limited uh, is a place with limited opportunities. Right. Start uh, dream big, but start, start small. Uh -huh. So you can find us as Urban SP. Uh -huh. Then you can call contact us directly at zero seven two six three seven six two seven seven. That's yeah. it. Yeah, uh, you can as well call on zero seven twelve six nine eight one two two. All right. Yeah, we also focusing on a partnership with another company. Mm. It's more for merger. Yeah. So in the coming days, we are likely to rebrand mm. once that merger goes through, mm. hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. So all the best. Uh, we can't add more because we are two minutes out of our time. Thank you so much, Videlis Hakim yeah. and uh, Calvin Kanegi for your time. Thank you. We appreciate it. So, Sian, thank you for watching. We see you next time right here on Hashtag Y in the morning. Have a fantastic Tuesday.